welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to demonstrate why I'm a massive fan of the Google Docs Cloud Word processor and associated Google Drive online storage. These can be used for free with a Google account and they're something I've used every day since 2009. Before we begin I want to point out I've not been asked or paid by Google to make this video. So let's go and take a closer look. So here we are in Google Drive at drive.google.com which is the normal starting point for working in Google Docs. And the default view here, unless you've changed it, is my drive. If I open this up, you can see I've got a lot of folders set up here on this account. Although frequently when I arrive on this page, I click on the recent to see my most recently used files. Here we're working in a free Google account, where by default you get 15 gigabytes of storage, although you can buy more. And at the top here, we've got new. If I click on new, you can see we could uh, upload files, upload folders, create new Google Docs. Google Sheets, which are spreadsheets, Google Slides, which are like PowerPoint files, Google Forms for doing things like online surveys, and there's even more things here for Google Drawings and lots of exciting things like that. I actually work in Google Docs in several Google accounts. If I just out tab, you can see another account. This is actually on a Google Workspace account, one you, you pay for, and here by default you get 30 gigabytes of storage in the standard subscription. But I think we'll go back to uh, this is account. This is the one I work in most of the time. Why do I spend most of my time in my free account, not my paid account? That's a long story. But uh, anyway, let's now open up a document. We'll open up this uh, document, which is the script for this particular video. And here we are in Google Docs. And the thing I really like about Google Docs is we have a very straightforward, a very uncluttered, a very just lets you get on with it type of interface. And just to give you a comparison, over here I'm running the online version of Word. When I started using Google Docs, the online version of Word didn't exist. It took Microsoft a long time to get into this market. And this is the default view with uh, this uh, massive ribbon thing. We can make that a bit better. We can go to the uh, single line ribbon like that. We can actually hide the ribbon if we want to. But uh, even if we do that, we don't get menus, we just get this stuff like we get in, in Word. Whereas if we go back to Google Docs, one of the things I really like about it is that, look, we have menus and they're straightforward menus. There's not too much stuff here. Google Docs started with very little functionality. It's been added over the years. I've watched it grow significantly since 2009, but they've never cluttered it up with things you don't need. I never find anything I can't do in Google Docs. It's got all I need, but no more. If we want to change the view, we can also do that. We can, for example, uh, get rid of the menus like that and indeed bring them back. That's uh, rather exciting. We can, of course, also press F11 to uh, get a full screen in our browser. And if we want to, we can even go to view and to a full screen like that. So if you've got work to do, you can have the whole page to work on, which is what I like when I'm getting on with serious writing. But I'll press escape to bring things back how they were and also press F11 again to get back to our tabs because I think we should create here a new document. I create Google Docs for absolutely everything. Everything I'm doing in my life where I need to keep track of information, I throw it into a Google Doc. I don't just write documents for this channel for the scripts. I have a document called Video State there that keeps track of everything going on with this. But if I'm doing a DIY project or anything else, I always create Google Docs to keep track of what I'm doing. And I do that by going to a new and then to a Google Docs and we will here uh, create a new Google Doc. You can use templates, but I always do a blank document that defaults to my own settings. And uh, here we are. And by default, it shows you these various categories. You can do clever things here, but if you just start typing, here is a heading, for example, like that. And we'll have it in a bold because it could have headings in bold. And uh, hello, we're going to type hello, haven't we? There we are. We've created the document. And we can give it a title up here. Let's call it, um, let's call it Harry. AA, I don't know why, but that seems a good name for a document right now. And there we are, we've created a new Google Doc. And of course, you can go back and forth between documents very easily just using the tabs. It's a fantastic way to work. If I just uh, close this down, we'll go back to uh, Google Drive and we can see here our document currently called Untitled Doc. Catch up with me, Google. Hopefully, if we do that, it'll catch up. There we are, it's now called uh, Harry AA. And if we want to do things with this document, we can uh, right click 
And here, as you can see, we can rename it, we can download it, we can make a copy, we can share it. I'll demonstrate that later. We can organize our files, move them to other folders, things like that. We can see file information if we want, or we can move a document to trash. I will do that. There we are, the file has disappeared. And with that, I've shown you the basics of working in Google Docs. It's an online word processor linked into Google Drive storage, which is where I personally arrange my digital life. Right, now that we've had a basic overview, let's turn to some of the specific reasons that I use Google Docs. And the first is that every time I create a document, it's securely saved on servers in Google data centers. Always after working on a document, I also go to file and to download, and I download an RTF version of the document like this. So there are always on-site and off-site copies of my data. And before somebody points out that I could synchronize Google Drive with a local folder, this is not a smart idea for backups, as if you accidentally delete a file, the synchronized copy will also be deleted. Now, the extent to which Google backs up user data is very hard to verify. But I have no doubt that data saved in Google's data centers provides a far higher level of instant resilience than I could achieve as a self-employed individual. As I've detailed in another video, I therefore trust Google Drive to provide the off-site copy in my 321 backup strategy. Oh, and if you're worried about security, I've joined the Google Advanced Protection Program. This is free, although you do have to purchase the physical security keys that are needed to log in to a secured account. Greetings. Another reason I like Google Docs is that I can access my files on any device running any operating system. And so whilst here we're on my laptop in Windows, I also work a great deal in Linux, and I also access and edit files using the Google Docs Android app on my Gemini PDA and on an Android tablet. And indeed, I even access Google Docs on my television, on which I run Chrome OS Flex via a connected PC, and where I often pop away from watching streaming media to jot down an idea or make an occasional edit. As we saw earlier, Google Docs is also collaborative, as it's possible to share documents between users, and this can be achieved either in Google Drive by right-clicking a file, as we saw earlier, and going down to Share, or you can also share a document directly in a document itself by clicking on Guess What Share. There we are. I'll just press F11 to have a bit more space on the screen. And as we can see, this document is currently shared with two other people, both of whom happen to be myself on different Google accounts. And indeed, I find it very handy to set up this kind of collaboration with myself as I run several different Google accounts used for various purposes. However, it's also possible to provide anybody with access to a document or indeed any kind of file uploaded to Google Drive by changing access down here from restricted to anyone with a link. And if you do that, you can then just copy the link and share it as appropriate. When a document is shared, it's worth noting that two or more people can edit live at exactly the same point in time. And to show that, let's bring in my tablet, which is running the Google Docs Android app, but it isn't currently in this document. But if we open up the document like that, here we are, and we can now see on the screen on the computer that we've got another user, which is highlighted up here as uh, we can see. There we are, that is me editing the document. And if on the tablet I uh, click to bring up the keyboard and to do a bit of editing, we can see I've moved down. And if I now type on the tablet, hello like that, there is a bit of a delay, but the changes do appear as we can see pretty much in real time on the other connected device. Now, I mainly use Google Docs due to the reasons I've just outlined. However, there are also some cool features that are sometimes very useful indeed. For example, if I give myself a bit of space here like that, and we go to Tools and to a Voice Typing, I can now click and type with my voice. Let's uh, have a go at this. 
Stanley the Knife jumped over the quick brown fox and fell over the lazy dog. There we go, and uh, that works. So if you want to uh, type with your voice, if you want to dictate to Google Docs, you can do that. Next, there's also a feature to translate documents, and if we select this, it asks for the title of a new document. We'll keep the default there. We have to choose a language. What should we have? Let's have, uh, I don't know, let's have French. And if I just click translate, a new document is created, and uh, voila, we have a version of a document in French. Finally, another cool feature is optical character recognition, which can convert text in photographs to editable text. To provide an example, here I've got a JPEG image of the opening of my book, Digital Genesis. This is just a picture of the, uh, the opening well of that section of the book. And if we go back to uh, Google Drive and we'll upload that file, let's do a file upload. And uh, there it is, just upload the JPEG file. And uh, there we are, it has happened. And if I just clicked on that file, it's just a JPEG. It would open ordinarily just so we could see the image file. However, if I go and right click the file like that and open with and Google Docs, the magic will happen. It'll create a new Google Doc. And if we give it a second, there we are. It has put into this document, first of all, the image that's there as an image, but below the image, we have some text. And if I wanted to, I could delete the image. It might be useful to have it, but I'm going to get rid of it. There we are. We'll get rid of that line as well, I think. That has gone too. And if I just go across the text, and I'll do a control space to get rid of the formatting. And I think I'll take it up a little bit to about, say, a 14. There we are. I've got some nice editable text. And I do sometimes use this feature to access the text in the photographed or scanned document. Now, the final thing I want to highlight about why I really like Google Docs is the fact that Google do actually listen. No, they do. And this links to the fact that both an advantage and a disadvantage of cloud-based applications like Google Docs is that when new features are created, they're automatically rolled out to all users. So it's not like having an installed application where if you don't like the things of a new version, you just don't install it. With Google Docs, if Google creates a new feature, it's automatically rolled out to everybody. You get it whether you want to or not. And as I've been using Google Docs for a very long time, I've seen lots of features rolled out, some of which have been great, some of which haven't been great. For example, let's just give ourselves a bit of space. A few years ago, Google rolled out a feature where if you entered a colon like that, this happened. You've got a menu to uh, select an emoji. And I'm sure if you're 12, this was really great. But for those of us who are not 12 years old and like using the colon as a form of punctuation, it was very annoying. But uh, fortunately, Google listened. And after about a week or so, you could turn it off. You could go to Tools and uh, Preferences down there. And uh, here we are, turn off insert emojis using the colon character. And this means now if you enter a colon, you get a colon and another colon. You can have loads of colons if you want them without getting the thing to insert an emoji. And another example of where Google have listened occurred fairly recently, which linked to the use of the at symbol. If I type an at symbol here in Google Docs like that, as you can see, we get the chance to insert email addresses and what they call smart ships, lots of exciting things like dates, other types of stuff. I don't particularly like that. It is annoying. Once I move on, I just get an at symbol. But what Google did a few months ago is they decided that every time you press new line in Google Docs, you should get the at symbol. Or even if you were scrolling down the document and you got to a, a new line between paragraphs or something, it displayed an app symbol. I can't show you that because it doesn't do it anymore. And the reason it doesn't do it anymore is that lots of us complain to Google. You can see some of this over here in the forums, but complaints happen in all kinds of different forums. And Google did something about it. And if we just scroll down somewhere down here, um, all the way down past this lot, where's it gone? I'll find it eventually. There we are. They've said, thanks for sharing this feedback. We heard you and have rolled back from the at symbol populating automatically. And this, I think, is a good thing. Google listens to their users and changes the program in response to what users are saying. And that certainly doesn't happen, for example, in Microsoft Word. When Microsoft changed from having menus to the ribbon and lots of people moaned, 
Microsoft did nothing about it. They didn't offer us a feature to turn it on or off. They just kept going like a steamroller. And if the users didn't like it, then sod the users. That was Microsoft's point of view. But Google with Google Docs, they are more flexible. They do respond to what people want. They change the program in a positive way in line with user feedback. And therefore, whilst I don't always like what Google do, I do like the way they respond to users. For me, this is a very important aspect of the Google Docs experience. I started using Google Docs every day when I was writing this book, A Brief Guide to Cloud Computing, which was published way back in 2010. And this was written entirely in Google Docs, and since that time I've written seven other books, over 500 video scripts, and thousands of thousands of other documents in Google Docs. And I've never lost a document or had any other kind of data loss, and I've been able to access all of my documents and wider files from any device. Now, I could have guessed have done this using other cloud services, but not, I think, with the same level of user experience. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.